What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsor bullcrap. Today, we're taking a look at the action role-playing title Nier Automata. Now, Nier is on the PS4 and developed by Platinum Games and is out now in Japan, March 7th in America, and March 10th pretty much everywhere else. A PC version is also planned for March 16th. Let's see what side Nier Automata lands on when it comes to the chaotic roulette wheel of Platinum Games, and if it lands on Bayonetta and Transformers Devastation, netting you huge returns, or if somehow it lands on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you just lost your house to us edition. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Nier Automata. A land without pants, robot fishing, and what the world would have looked like if Euro Disney built a park in hell. Graphics are up first. So I have to say, Nier is really a unique beast. When you first look at it and watch it and play it, the first thing you're going to think is, ah, so now I remember what it's like when I lost my premium Crayola box and had to use the school 16 basic color set. And you would not actually be blamed for thinking that. And the initial overarching series of browns and grays and greens and yellows actually gives you a title that's unique, but not exactly altogether pleasant to look at. But what's interesting is the more you play this, there's a distinct excellence in the presentation that's occurring here. And as you play it, color is used as a punctuation on the sentence of a location in a way that we actually rarely see in video games. It's like that weak spot on a boss that flashes to tell you to shoot it with your gun of splodiness plus 10. But here it's a bit of fireworks or confetti that narratively makes you stop and look and notice something even if that something is the absence of your original expectation, without being needlessly mysterious due to spoilers. Basically, color work here is fantastic and deeper than we actually see in other titles. Now, design-wise, Nier fits loosely to its predecessor, and you sprint around as the Camp Finder Pants android known as 2B, with her partner in robotic crime 9S, as they work through an incredible array of gameplay objectives. One second you're slashing trash can aliens with razor blade hug attacks, and the next you're in a robot in a top-down pseudo 3D bullet hell moment, and then the next you're taking down enemies that make Shadow of the Colossus look like it was a set of digital training wheels to get you prepared for this game. That's the thing about Nier. Its presentation is incredibly apt for what it's trying to do, and as you continue, that sense of discovery that's contained within it is matched both by incredibly varied and really interesting level design with some story intertwined into those locations. It's really fantastic stuff. Sadly, not everything is perfect in a land of thigh-high stocking-wearing robots, which I have to admit is probably the saddest sentence I've said today. On the PS4, we see a game that tries to hit 60 FPS with a 900p resolution, and on the Pro, we see a slightly elevated 1080p and also trying to hit 60 FPS, but unfortunately, at times, Games, the frame rate here is all over the place with semi-frequent drops from the expected 60 FPS to somewhere around the mid 40s. And this is sadly with the newest patch. Now, while normally that might not be as big of a deal as it is in some games, Platinum has put a ton of work into a unique series of gameplay systems, many of them requiring excellent timing. That can be a bit hard when the frame rates dive in like GameStop stock. In no way, shape or form does this kill the gameplay, but it does affect it a little bit from time to time. Also, while I really did like the locations themselves, some of them are drab looking with a decidedly antiseptic look to them that feels a little less apocalyptic and more pre-learning to make a level feel real 101 gaming class. Luckily, character design both for and against your plucky little blandly named androids is really done well, as special effects and animation are also top notch, including an incredibly apt running animation that just looks like it belongs to this dual sword wielding android on a case of kill everything and get the quest later. As a package, I would say it's good. It is held back by some FPS issues, and as I said, some drab level clutter. Sound, music, and voice. You're 2B, right? My name's 9S. I'm here to provide support. Copy that. So, was that big old buzzsaw the Goliath you came here to take out? No, just another defensive system. Oh, well, uh, I guess we have to find the target then, huh? I've got a flight unit, so I'll take a look around the perimeter. All right, I'll work my way inside from the ground. And of course, sound is always up first. You know, while normally in games like this, we do have that same steel on steel ear slaughtering frequencies that occur when sword meets robot. There are a number of things that Nier does to alleviate much of that, including dynamic changes to the audio soundscape, to the samples themselves, and 
using a good number of hit samples to make combat feel a little bit more refined than some other titles. Now that doesn't mean we don't have times where you leap into battle and for a second everything sounds like it's being piped through just your tweeters on your sound system. But overall there is a fairly good tonal layer here and expected big boom moments actually play out really well. Now for a game like this it has to have good 3D audio separation and positioning and it's paramount and for the most part Nier handles it well with enough information for the gamer that can inform them that an alien is spooling up a 360 whirling blade attack or if it's just cantering around uselessly as it jockeys for a position to end your life. Overall I'd say pretty good sound. Music. Okay, so if Near for Many is a god tier soundtrack, what happens when another comes in and so soundly trounces the original that you're left thinking, damn, did I just think that other soundtrack was good or did someone come in and basically spider silver the entire music community, elevating the expectations far past what most people can actually perform? There's an underlying emotional response to almost every track and add to that some stellar mixing between diegetic and non-diegetic music during particular poignant scenes and you have one of the best soundtracks easily this generation. Now, there's a lot of reasons why this could be. It could be the absolutely stellar vocals that match atmosphere and theme within the levels, or the continual use of particular chords and patterns to elicit very specific feelings in specific locations. But damn, it doesn't really matter if you're sprinting willy-nilly through ancient destroyed city streets while someone wails about loss in the background, or if you're greeted with chanting enemies whose voices suddenly fade out and become the music. The soundtrack just works. Now, if there's one little caveat to all this, it's that I do wish there was a bit more, as particular locations did end up playing a bit more than I would have liked, and there was some repetitiveness there. But let's be completely honest, that's sort of like complaining that your jewel-encrusted cod piece is too heavy. At some point, nah, voice. So, despite a lot of trying, this was just pretty well done. It's not great, it's not horrible. First, understanding that for the most part, it's androids and robots, which is like having two versions of Star Wars Hayden Christensen talking to themselves. That being said, what emotion was available and played out within the roles of the main characters, and of course those that you meet, were well done, and if you beat the game, truly beat it, it actually matters. All that being said, what was done spectacularly and absolutely has to be mentioned are the particular moments when true emotion is shown from very specific groups of characters. Now that's all I can say without spoilers, but holy shit. There are occasional times when engaging specific groups where the game absolutely nails the voice work. I mean, some of the moments are actually haunting. Overall, pretty good with a few wooden willies to bring it down a notch, but with some excellent group voice to bring it up a bit. Gameplay. So as always, we're going to start a little bit about the story. First, Nier takes place some undisclosed time after the original title. Humankind got its ass kicked by an alien invader and made a hasty retreat to the moon like some kind of Bond villain. Then they created a series of androids who you happen to play. They were created and used as soldiers in a war on Earth between the androids and the remaining invading alien army's robot warriors. As the game starts, you play as 2B, a no-nonsense sword-swinging android capable of hedonistic hell-raising as you're traipsing from location to location in a game that really does start out feeling a bit been there, done that, and then sprouts into a somewhat limited open-world-style adventure game with side-scroller and shoot-em-up elements randomly mixed around throughout it. But let's be honest, the real question most will ask is this, does this game pass on the genetic awesomeness of past Platinum titles in the gameplay department? Titles known for deep, easy to learn, difficult to master fighting systems? Or is it a stillborn monstrosity, the likes of which only Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Korra have had the sad opportunity of delivering? I'm actually stoked to say it's the former. The gameplay system just worked. And when I say that, I mean after learning how to time dodging and what moves were hidden in what circumstances, I basically spent the entire game absolutely going hog wild. And better yet, when I did die, it was solidly my fault. Now, a mixture of elements from previous titles, the game has your basic weak and strong attacks, plus jumps and dodges, and those can be combined as an instant button press or timed later or earlier, in some cases, for unique attacks. And of course, a perfect dodge unleashes specific attacks that are only available in that situation. Whether you're learning how to jump and perform a timed dodge to air spring backwards, only to launch a critical series of life-ending moves on your enemies, or if you're using your companion pod, which can be upgraded with a large assortment of special attacks that can shoot out low damage laser fire or suddenly turn into wicked holographic hammers like you're watching that 1980s cartoon Visionaries Knights of the Magical Light. And to me, really, the fact that the combat system works so well and translates to the 2D elements with such ease is really a testament to what Platinum can do if they put their hearts into a title. And it's those other elements that are actually equally as impressive to me, sprinting around a group of homicidal herbicide sprayers and destroying them with dashes, perfectly timed dodges, and holographic spears leaping out of the ground is one thing. But then you turn a corner and the game just, boom, swivels to 2D leaping and jumping where most of the moves are actually translated from 3D instantly to 2D, or moments where you leap into mechs and go full-on bullet hell for a couple minutes in both normal gameplay moments as well as massive boss battles. The mixture is done incredibly well here, and for the most part, it really does a good job at breaking up that gameplay. 
Of course, obviously, I said most part for a reason. The execution could actually be better. Sometimes knowing how to navigate in the 2D world or finding particular paths can actually be a little bit troublesome. And I'm looking at you, awesome medieval castle. They can appear very rough compared to other instances. And this doesn't happen a ton of times, but there are the occasional moments that you want to interact with something in the background and you find it just a little bit difficult to do. Now, when you're not fighting, you're exploring, doing odd jobs for the world's weirdest assortment of quest givers, leveling up and upgrading equipment and so forth. For the main character, you find an upgrade chip and items you find along the way that augment it. Each upgrade takes a bit or a lot of memory and you place those in your card. For example, you can add electricity damage to every attack, make yourself auto heal and take less up close damage. And those might eat up your space, leaving a very useful auto item use upgrade not able to be installed. You can buy more space and you can also upgrade the upgrades. It's a fantastic system and not only does it keep with the theme of the title, but actually requires some real thought as to how you want your playstyle to be. Do you want to augment your strengths, whatever they may be, or do you want to shore up those things that you aren't able to perform regularly in combat? Now, within that system, there are also upgrades for things like telling you world information, health gauge, where and what items are everywhere, and many more. It's a very unique system, and those who like to play on easy can actually install auto attacks, dodge, and shoot items, which can only be added if you're playing those specific difficulties. Now, I can see some people thinking it's a little bit cumbersome, but you know what? Thematically, it fits, and I'm okay with that. Also, you can adjust your companion's fighting style in many ways, from long and short range to aggressive and passive and a couple others. Now, this combined with the chip upgrade system absolutely deepens the playing field as you can use chip upgrades to offset your playstyle's weakness and your companion to bolster your strengths or the other way around. Or maybe you just go full aggressive, throw every upgrade into massive damage, turn your companion on aggressive and hope that blinding the enemy with a futuristic version of Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon will somehow get you through those difficult opponents. And I think it's those combination of different systems in tandem that really makes this game feel so different. Now that brings me to difficulty in AI. And as you guys know, I test every level of difficulty from the lowest where the game basically plays for you all the way to the highest where split second reactions are the bare minimum you need to reach the end of this game. And I have to say, it's actually pretty good. Difficulty changes, various damages that are done, but the unique enemy makeup like enemies with shields to stop bullets don't really stop being spawned in the lower levels, resulting in the ability of someone who wants to play at any level seeing much, if not all of what the other players see. It also delights in deceiving audiences when it comes to how it handles beginning, middle, and end of stories. And throwing in mid-level and secret bosses can also confound some gamers. About 10 hours in, you're gonna see the first ending, but guess what, it's actually not, not at all. It's just basically a massive narrative story break. Another couple hours in and you might think, ah, this is the ending, but nope. So you have to understand that a game like this deals in narrative threads centuries long, adds in teleporting androids and humans living on the moon, and basically you have a tale that is told across a unique gulf of time in a unique way. It's something that is quite different than other titles. And unlike many titles that are offering new game pluses, this is not in any way, shape or form that. In fact, Nier is sort of offering current game plus plus. Unfortunately, Automata does not come out completely unscathed. The story can be woefully cumbersome, and hiding information in side stories and side quests can mean narrative gaps from one gamer to the other. And that's in a game that feels, at times, like you're playing someone's slow descent into madness as they watch Ghost in the Shell at some old folks' home. Additionally, there's a fair bit of traipsing around the same locations a number of times, and while that's absolutely attached to continued new locations being offered, at times it can be a bit numbing, even with the later game abilities for various travel types. As a package, you have a tried and true platinum gameplay and an incredible amount of content. Fun factor. It's a blast, and the fact is, is that I can't spoil it here, but there are some gameplay secrets that are absolutely phenomenal later in the title. And the fact that those are meaningful and new is something that's fairly rare in gaming today, as those two things don't always combine into a giant robot of awesome gameplay in as much as everyone would like to pretend they do. But that being said, rerunning the same spots, a couple fairly fruitless side quests, and one or two hard crashes did impact my fun factor a bit. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. Listen, this game isn't going to make you magically like platinum games, but if you do, it is well worth buying. To me, this is easily the best platinum game there is. One of the reasons why is because they've married their excellent combat systems with an incredibly engaging story. Of course, the question is, do you have to have played the first game to enjoy this? No, but there are a number of themes and moments that will resonate once if you've only played this game once and an additional time if you played the original game. Seriously, bravo to a job well done. So anyway, that's it for me. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Make sure to check Twitter and Patreon. Of course, Patreon is the way I can continue to give you game reviews like this. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.